Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Late Night Linux Extra. I'm Joe. And today I've got a discussion for you between Jim Salter and Neil Gomper. Jim, you may know from Two and a Half Admins and his articles at Ars Technica. He is a real ZFS advocate. Neil contributes to all sorts of open source projects, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and he is a real ButterFS advocate. Really, what we have here is a diplomatic mission by me to bring these two people together to discuss their differences because they have clashed before in various places online, but only ever in the written form. And I wanted to bring them together and hopefully find some common ground. And honestly, I think it worked out pretty well because after we stopped recording, the conversation continued for over an hour, just talking about Linux and file systems and all sorts of stuff. So I'm actually quite pleased with how the whole thing turned out. Before we get to that, just a quick thank you to everyone who supports us with PayPal and Patreon. We really do appreciate that. You can go to latenightlinux.com slash support if you want to learn about that. And remember, for $5 or more per month on Patreon, you get an advert-free RSS feed that has Late Night Linux, Late Night Linux Extra, and Linux After Dark in it. And if you want to send your feedback, then show at latenightlinux.com. So let's get straight on with it then. So I'm here with Neil Gomper and Jim Salter. Welcome along, chaps. Hello. Hey. So the reason that I've asked you both to come on is because Jim recently wrote an article for Ars Technica about ButterFS. And also on Two and a Half Admins, we've kind of covered ButterFS and how Jim's not a huge fan of it. And Neil, you always come to ButterFS's defense. I suppose let's start with the recent article about it. I saw you in some Telegram groups and stuff and on Twitter disagreeing with some of what Jim had said. So I'll give you the first word on this, I suppose. What what did he get wrong, do you think? The thing that kind of got to me the most about it was that it felt like the fundamental complaint was ButterFS is different than everyone else that came before it. And that in itself is bad. Like the specific valid complaints about some aspects of it, I think, were legitimate, like around, you know, the issues with RAID 5 and 6. Notwithstanding, I think the thing that kind of cheesed me off personally was it felt like it was more of a complaint about it being different than about it being on the whole balance of things for all of its features bad. But like some of the stuff I actually kind of agreed with, like it would be super nice to have a virtual block device for a ButterFS um, pool because then you can do interesting things like, well, if you need a um, file system format independent way of archiving the array, note the array, not the file system, then it is a very easy thing to do. I get why that wasn't the case, because when they were first designing it, they were very explicitly trying not to step on the toes of the block subsystem. And VFS doesn't have a way to export a virtual device, aside from character devices, but we don't want to talk about those. Those are those are a weird place that should never really be thought about. Like some of the feedback was actually fairly good, uh, even if it was in kind of hard to to see, like... Some of the subcommand stuff is a little less intuitive around like how do you enumerate subvolumes and things like that. How do you access certain features? I felt like a little bit it was presented in a less productive way than it could have been to make actual improvements happen in ButterFS technology as a whole. Because like Jim's super experienced, he's done a lot of stuff with this kind of with you know with storage and whatnot. Like he's made was it Sanoid I think is what it's called. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like. Having worked with both ZFS and ButterFS over the years, um, I work for a company that uses ZFS all over the place. My employer has contributed the native encryption for ZFS, but I personally use ButterFS because my experiences with ZFS left me, uh, pardon the pun, a little salty about it. So the fundamental thing to me was that wasn't the critique of some of the functionality, like the RAID 5 and 6 isn't even exposed in Fedora's installer or any of the graphical tools because I don't want to show it, but more of the way it was presented and how it was articulated. And it felt like there was a way to have an opportunity to have a a more um, productive conversation with the upstream project, especially now with ButterFS gaining more adoption across the the space, where I think now that we're going towards stabilization and improvement, this is something that would have been better with a more productive conversation. 
I have heard that exact same comment about, you know, now we're to the place where we're, we're going to work on stabilization and making everything stable and predictable. You know, that that exact same conversation happened about nine years ago when the experimental tag first came off of Butter. And now, you know, you've, you've got some things coming back. The experimental tag left nine years ago, but uh, now, you know, RAID 5 and RAID 6 is a great example. One of the things that bothers me is that you really can't get a consensus from senior Butter developers or the community about what is or is not safe to use. Even RAID 5 and RAID 6, Butter Wiki users are constantly trying to soften the warnings around that. You've even said that, well, it's, you know, mostly production ready, but, you know, then the link you go there and the the link that is supposed to detail it being mostly production ready says things like Butter RAID 5 is in such a rough state, I didn't bother testing RAID 6, which that does not sound like production to me. And then you've got Joseph Basic and David Sturba. Joseph authored a very stern warning for uh, Butterfuss Progs 511, I believe. Do not use RAID 5 or 6 other than testing or evaluation. It, you know, it has major issues. I'm paraphrasing. And uh, David Sturba merged that. But we've still got people saying, no, RAID 5 and 6 are, are fine. And they're they're just not. You know, when the senior developers tell you this feature should not be used for anything but testing or evaluation, like, don't use that. That lack of consensus or kind of a clear picture of where the project is, is an awful lot of my big issue with Butter. I do not think Butter is safe as an entire project for users to actually try to use for themselves. I mean, there are pieces of it that are fine, but the problem is they're littered in, they're, they're littered amongst pieces that are absolutely not fine. And it's not easy to figure out which is which. That's a fair point. I have heard this before nine years ago as well, like when it comes to like the, the first round of stabilization, the experimental tags and stuff. And I agree with you, like it was premature nine years ago. And the amount of scaling down and boxing in the functionality that we were going to rely on in ButterFS and Fedora was precisely around making sure we use the stuff that not only I was confident was going to work, but that I had kernel developer support that it was going to work that the kernel development engineers that were working with us, Joseph Basic and I've, you know, David Sturba, as you mentioned, and a few others, have assured me of their production quality status, largely by showing me data of it being used at a large scale. Like so none of the features that we turned on in Fedora are features that haven't gone through a really strong qualification process. Now, that being said, I do not want to make light of the fact that the RAID 5.6 stuff has been basically languishing for like the past decade. The only thing I can say to it is that it's largely a function of the companies that have been driving it. Almost none of them actually use the RAID 5.6 functionality at all. Like they use either the RAID 1 or RAID 10 functionality. And that, despite users' pleas for it, has kind of left it in an awkward state. Now, that being said, I realize that you probably hadn't seen this because the recordings for the for the conference actually only just went up. The Fedora, Nest with Fedora conference only just went up last week. But we had folks from Western Digital Corporation coming on and talking to us about how they're working on zoned devices for Butterfest. Now, zoned devices is a super new feature for all of Linux in, mm-hmm. in, in, in the first place. So let's uh, I want to just put huge caveat emptor there. Zone devices are weird, and I cannot vouch for them right now. I don't even own any zone devices, because before now, I wouldn't have trusted an SMR drive to anything. Well, you do own zone devices, you just don't get to manage them. Every SSD is a zone device. It's just drive managed, not host managed. Yeah, I I should say host managed zone devices. Mm -hmm. The folks at Western Digital, Damien Lamole and Johannes Thurman, I think is his name. Oh, man, I hate it when I mess up people's names, but I'm sorry. These two folks actually came on to Nest with Fedora and actually gave talks about their work on zone native storage and their work on ButterFS and doing, they're doing their integration work in Fedora primarily. And an aspect of this is that they're developing an erasure coded base system to replace the existing algorithm for RAID 5 and 6. And they're hoping to have that land sometime in the next six to 10 months. Um, They basically started working on it as soon as the ZNS stuff landed upstream. If you go to the Linux ButterFS mailing list, I actually asked them this after the zone native storage stuff landed. And they said that they were they had started working on it. It's going to take a little while, but they're they're working on it and they're doing it 
Actually, partly because ZNS needs them to rework all the RAID modes. Because the RAID modes, as they currently stand, across every technology, it's not just ButterFS, needs to be tweaked to work for host-managed zoned devices. Because the algorithms have to work differently for them. Okay. Actually, as of right now, RAID 5 and 6 is totally disabled for zone storage. Like, you cannot turn it on for zone storage. Okay, this episode is sponsored by CBT Nuggets. Training for IT professionals or anyone looking to build IT skills. Go to cbtnuggets.com slash late night Linux and sign up for a seven day free trial. The on demand virtual labs mean you can build practical experience with the commands, config, scripts, and everything you need to get the most out of each course. Another standout feature is the accountability coaching service, available to all learners with a subscription, which gives you access to a real person who will help you craft a personalized learning plan and set goals, and will check in with you to keep you accountable. So start your free seven-day trial today at cbtnuggets.com slash late-night-linux. It includes unlimited access to all course materials, including virtual labs. That's cbtnuggets.com slash late-night-linux. I do want to move back for a second. Uh, one thing we didn't address is you you said that you felt that uh, my objection to butter is that it's different than what came before. And I want to push back on that pretty strongly. If I wasn't happy with things that were different than they used to be, I'd be in the stone age, right? There wasn't actually very much about butter that was new or different to me because by the time I encountered butter, I already had, you know, ZFS under my belt. And as I said in that article, you know, the feature, the, the Venn diagram of the feature set of Butter and ZFS is a slightly lumpy circle. And in fact, when I did start getting my feet wet with Butter, you know, some of the few things that are notably different and new that it brought to the table that ZFS did not were some of the things that I was the most excited about. CP reflink equals always is amazing. I deeply wish that I had that in ZFS and I don't. The Butter RAID 1 topology, despite the fact that I will absolutely warn any general purpose audience, this is leading you down dangerous paths, it's a very interesting topology, and it absolutely does enable things that so many people want so much, you know, to, to put just random collections of drives together and get accelerated performance, and in theory, some additional redundancy. My issue there is not... It's not Butter's fault that RAID 1 leads junior admins, you know, down these dangerous paths. But when you add the fact that Butter RAID 1 encourages putting together, you know, the random collection of hard drives in your drawer that you found all over the neighborhood, and it's managing them in a much less safe method than any other multiple disk manager I have ever worked with, the way that Butter will automatically add a stale disk back into the array on boot if it's present, but not discover that it's stale or bring it back up to date makes Butter RAID of any level considerably more dangerous to work with on typical systems in a typical environment than MD RAID, than 3-Ware Hardware RAID, than Adaptec Hardware RAID, than LSI Hardware RAID, than ZFS. Butter stands out here. It's the only one that automatically chucks a stale disk back in the array without so much as a buy your leave and doesn't repair it. And that can absolutely lose you data. That bothers the crap out of me. I don't know if I've actually seen a drive get re-added automatically on my systems. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something different and I didn't know it. But what I've seen is that when the disk is yoinked, technical term there, it doesn't come back. And ButterFS actually complains that there is a missing disk in the in the setup. I don't know what I'd be doing differently where that happens versus what you experienced. So you can see it very easily. All you got to do is whether you're doing it um, in hardware or in virtual, pull a disk either while the array is running or not. If it's not running, then mount it degraded. If it is still running, then it will obviously continue to run. Then slot the disk back in, whether it's virtual or hardware, and reboot the system. When the system reboots, it sees all the disks it's expecting to see. So it mounts the array with all the disks, including the stale one. And in my example, with a Butter RAID 1, you know, with only two disks, which makes it, you know, a traditional mirror, not, uh, you know, the distributed redundancy thing that Butter RAID 1 normally is, just so much as touching a file while that one disk is missing is enough to keep the array from being mountable after you boot. Hmm. If you reboot again, just to make this clear, you yank the disk, touch a file. 
reboot the system with the disk back in, it comes back online. There's no error messages, there's no complaints, everything looks happy and fine. Touch a file again. Now, yank the disk that hasn't gone missing yet. Your array is unmountable. Not with O degraded, not with anything, it just flat won't mount. And you can make all the arguments about, well, you know, if you had four disks and you did, you know, uh, the the metadata, you know, RAID 1C3 instead of just plain RAID 1, then, you know, maybe that would do it. And, well, that's great. You know, maybe that would mitigate against that somewhat, but we're only looking at metadata right now. And if you do, you know, M RAID 1C3, that might make the array mountable. It won't do anything about the data that you lost, that you didn't know you lost because you, you had no error reporting, no anything anywhere in here. And this kind of transient disk failure is incredibly common. You have a SATA cable get wiggly and the drive drops off the bus, but it's there again after a reboot. This kind of thing happens all the time. I'll have to look and, and try that. The specific experiments that I did, I don't think I did exactly those particular steps. So I will try with those and, and see how that how that comes back. But yeah, like for me, I, I personally, if I'm doing RAID, which... I don't usually have enough disks to do RAID very often, but when I do, I'm usually doing a RAID 10 because mm-hmm. I have gone past the point of like RAID 5 and 6 is going to make any bloody sense on on storage because like my disks, if I have a RAID set up, my disks are too big and I have too many mm-hmm. of them. Uh, so it's either I have too many disks or not enough. I don't usually have like that that's middle spot where it's like these other RAID modes make sense to use. So most of the time I'm using RAID 10 and... I haven't really had problems, like even with power failures and stuff like that. So like I've even had cases where like, oh, it looks like one of the disks is faulted and swapping in a new disk, the replace mechanism does what it's supposed to do. Even though, yes, they say that the replace mechanism is a little weird with some of the RAID modes, at least with the RAID 10 mode that I've used, it it wasn't an issue. It also bugged me that the, uh, the way to work around the issue with the stale disks, a scrub will not fix it. You need a balance to fix it if you had a disk go stale. And that is incredibly non-intuitive. Um, even people who are experienced with storage are going to see, you know, butter scrub and oh, well, scrub, that's how you, you know, repair errors and, you know, missing blocks. And not in this case, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, I never liked scrub versus balance in both ZFS and ButterFS. It's, it's, I, I kind of wish that was just one subcommand that did everything. Oh, sorry, resilver. Is, resilver is the ZFS term. Resilvering is not balancing. I know, but what I'm saying is that all of these different modes, the subtleties among them is incredibly annoying, and there is no reason that you need to make people suffer through those. Mm. That's my point. It's like, yeah, balance, scrub, silver, whatever. Like, who cares? The end result is that you're re-verifying the whole thing and sewing up any loose ends and making the array happy again. Like, that's what people want. Well, you realize in ZFS, it is one mode. Scrub and resilver are the same thing. A scrub is just a resilver that you triggered whether you needed it or not. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, like, using the different terminology and telling people these things is, why do you bother? I kind of wish that ZFS had not landed on the resilver term. I feel like rebuild was already well enough understood, and I don't think ZFS does anything different from the administrator's point of view enough to, to merit a whole new term. To draw this to some sort of conclusion, then... Do you think that you two are any closer to being on the same page about this? I feel like maybe we are a little bit. I mean, Neil has said several times he he understands where I'm coming from a little better now. So maybe. So I work at a company that uses ZFS all the time. And before that, I worked with LVM almost exclusively for everything. And even before Mm -hmm. that, I was doing never do this. Never use DM RAID. Oh, DM RAID is evil. That was what I used before. Well, wait, are, are we specifically talking about DM RAID or MD RAID? Because they're very similar, but they're not quite the same. We're talking about the thing that has 1.0 RC16 for 20 years. Okay. <laughs> that is DM RAID, which uh, is the first implementation of a device mapper based RAID. Yeah. MD RAID is the second one that is yeah. way better. I've used MD RAID with LVM. I've used MD RAID by itself. DM RAID is still the bit that ties in with motherboard fake RAID, which always pisses Bingo. me off. I'm like, yep. stop, you don't need it. There's a perfectly good mechanism in the kernel. Use that. Well, the project's been dead for like 20 years. RC16 has been that way since I think 2004. I'm actually yelling at users then who, you know, try to use their motherboard fake RAID with Linux. And it's like, stop. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally I'm totally OK with that. Blame Intel. They are now making it the default on new boards and it drives me bonkers. And I freaking hate it. 
And it also doesn't work on Linux. It makes life miserable if you want to boot Linux on a modern computer. Even on a one-device setup, for some reason, they're turning the stupid fake rate on. It makes it really annoying to turn on, to put Linux Ew. on it. Yeah, I know it's gross. It's just like whatever. They're using it for like this Intel rapid start. I forget what it is, but like what they're doing is they're basically rating parts of the disk itself to itself so that it can like... I don't know. I don't understand how any of this newfangled stuff works from Intel. It, it's like they live in a universe that just doesn't make any sense to me. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, gents. And um, hopefully this will allow you to have got to know each other and uh, not have these weird arguments on Twitter and stuff in future. Maybe you can be more civil to each other. Twitter is a hard place to have a good conversation. Yes, it is. I, I guess the next uh, after the next butter article, Neil, you need to just uh, you know DM me a Jitsi link. <laughs> sure, why not? Bypass the text. <laughs> yeah, one of the more interesting things that I just wind up being in these days is I'm just trying to keep up and plugging away at gaps and things around uh, around ButterFS myself. Like I have a I have a list, and I bring that list to the ButterFS developers. Basically, I think I want to say at least once a month, and we're chopping away at the list. Check back in a year. In a year's time, I want I want you to see whether you see some of the fruits of that list being chopped down. I genuinely hope that I do. Me too. So if people want to get in contact with you both, uh, what are your two Twitter handles then? You can find me on Twitter at JRSSNet. And you can find me on Twitter at DET underscore Conan underscore Kudo. And yes, that means detective Conan Kudo. Thanks, guys. <laughs>